You might remember in the last video, which I'll link up here, I accidentally blew this DC to DC converter up. Okay, wait, did you hear that? That's not good. What is that about? I didn't mean to, uh, and I'm not sure quite how it happened, but then I retrieved this from the bin and I thought, maybe I can actually salvage some bits and pieces out of here. For instance, there's a couple of nice heat sinks. Um, there's a coil in here. There's some other bits and pieces. And what I thought I'd do is actually, well, it's a little tough. Oh no, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, good. Oh, it's a satisfying snap. Um, okay, so it looks like there's a chip of some sort on there. Let's have a look at that. Uh, RU7088R. I'm not sure what that is. Um, but yeah, I might have to desolder some of this. I mean, I can't see any obvious damage on here but it just popped and didn't work after that. So who knows? And I'm not sure really at the price point that this came in at that, you know, it's really <laughs> solid, reliable electronics. It is what it is. Um, let's have a look and see what this transistor is and then maybe we'll pull the coil off. Uh, if this is something like a BJT NPN or maybe even a MOSFET, we could build something like Maybe we could build a dual thief circuit to see if these components are actually working or recoverable. Let's do it. All right, extraction achieved. Uh, what is it? Let's pop it in here. Is it going to sit there? All right. And is this the component that's blown? No, it looks like a pretty beefy MOSFET, so that should be fine. And uh, let's pull this coil out. Actually, what I might do is I'll, I'll make a dual thief circuit uh, with a coil, a different coil and a different MOSFET, and then we'll swap them in and see if uh, if these guys work. Here we have a typical dual thief circuit, old school type. Come in a bit closer and we'll have a look and see what's what. There's the hand wound coil. Sort of reminds me of something. Oh yeah. Uh, and there's very little to this. There's um, a 1K resistor. This is a BJT NPN transistor, the coil itself, and that's pretty much it. On the other side, we've got, I think, a one point something voltage, 1.36 volts, certainly not enough to actually run this little guy, this little LED. And I think the LED has a forward voltage of probably close to three volts or something like that. Let's have a look. And the handy dandy tester says uh, 2.91 volts. Yep, so absolutely no way that's gonna run normally, but uh, due to the magic of the jewel thief, there it is. Uh, and we can't just take out the BJT and say, hey, I've got a MOSFET here. Uh, what is this? I think this is a BS170. And should be, yep, MOSFET. So three is source. So if we turn this sucker around and just pop it in there, nothing's going to happen, I predict. Yeah, because this is current driven and this is voltage driven. So I have to find a circuit that, uh, that probably uses both actually. If you want to find out more about the Jewel Thief and where it comes from, I mean, I could, I could bang on about it for a while, but um, you know, there was a time when I used to sit there watching television and winding these things up for fun. Um, I used to make these little torches for people, actually. So little uh, PCB, uh, exactly what you see here, and then uh, one of these little holders. And people would put their old batteries in there, and they'd get themselves a, uh, a torch. Has that stopped oscillating? Why has that stopped? Oh, because <laughs> that's not a BJT. Panic stations. Yeah, so I used to make these things at at, uh, at night time, uh, watching television the same way that people crochet or knit or whatever. But um, yeah, rather than me going on about it, uh, really what you should do is you should see Big Clive's original video from about nine years ago now, which I'll, I'll post up here uh, and see what's what. Let's go find a, another circuit that we might be able to use. Um, otherwise, we'll abandon the whole thing and uh, and we'll just pick off what we can from that uh, that dead uh, PCB and then get on with our lives. 
Before we leave the circuit, I've just put a couple of probes on there uh, using this oscilloscope. Uh, this oscilloscope was a prop uh, for an evil scientist in the last video, but uh, actually uh, Steve sent it over a while ago and it is now being used for its uh, original intention, which is um, yeah, looking at signals in circuits like this. You can see the purple uh, channel two circuit is lower than the yellow uh, channel one circuit. And you can see that the Jewel Thief circuit, the yellow one, uh, you know, is oscillating all over the shop. So pretty noisy. I can see some ringing there. Um, you can smooth that out. Uh, so I do have videos on, uh, on using that Jewel Thief or uh, oscillating circuit uh, to power a microcontroller where it doesn't freak out so much. But yeah, basically that's what's happening. That's, this is why it's able to work. All right, let's get on with it. Thanks, Steve. So here's our voltage driven MOSFET dual thief circuit. And um, yeah, that's as opposed to the far simpler uh, current driven uh, BJT transistor um, dual thief circuit. Uh, it, is, it was actually difficult, quite difficult to find this circuit and I tried a few. I'll put up the uh, circuit diagram here so you can take a good look at it. Um, it's rel relatively simple, I guess. So you've got a BJT here. I've chosen an SS8050. I've got a MOSFET over here. This is the BS170. And the joy of this circuit is there's a 100K pot here. And if I change it, you can actually make a dimmable um, dual thief circuit, which is pretty cool. Uh, actually, let's get, um, yeah, let's put a probe on there. Have we got, I'm not going to do that. Let's try that and just see what's coming out of there. Uh, without flaring too much. So what have we got going in to start with? So this could be tricky. You need to be an octopus sometimes in this game. So we've got... Okay, so 1.3 volts being fed in from the pretty dead AAA battery. And then I'll leave this here. And I will try and grab the other side of this diode here. That's this one here. Okay, so three volts, and then if I wind this up and down, does it change? It does. Yep. So up to what is that? Four point up to five volts. That's pretty cool. And then wound down to yeah, two point six ish something volts, just on a little bit there. And I imagine that you could have a mess with that. And I certainly will. I think that's a pretty cool circuit, actually. Um, yep. So uh, a dimmable MOSFET. Uh, combo with a BJT dual thief circuit. Well, you don't see that every day and it's working pretty well. There's a diode in here. Um, in the original diagram, it says RGP10M, whatever that is. I just got, I've just put a 1N48, uh, four, uh, four uh, sorry, 1N4148, four, four which is um, also recommended in the description on the actual uh, website that I found this as well, which I'll link in the blog and probably on this video. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now the last uh, bit of this video is to take out the MOSFET that is working and put in our recovered MOSFET and see if it's working. And then also take out the um, War of the World style toroid inductor here and uh, probably rewire the one, hopefully that I can get out of that uh, broken DC-DC converter and, uh, and use that as well, just to see if we can recover some stuff. All right, there's our monster MOSFET in there, and I've just had to swap these, uh, this green and this yellow lead around because this is a slightly different pinout from the BS170, but no biggie. Uh, so the question is, will it be formed the same? Yeah, it does. It is a dimmable dual thief circuit as well. Um, never thought that, I guess, when it came out of the factory, uh, it'd be doing something with so it's probably pretty happy with itself at this stage. All right, I'm going to try and pull out this monster guy and uh, convert it to one of these and we'll give that a go as well. Just got the hot air gun on this at 350 degrees. Uh, that's Celsius, not sure what it is in flamingos. You'll have to consult your, your conversion tables for that one. Um, massive pads here, so I imagine a bit of heat will be required. Can't even see any evidence of melting at this stage. Um, yep, so I'll keep this one going for a bit. Uh, you guys talk amongst yourself and I will get back to you. Well, happy days. The coil is out and I did rewire it and got a spare bit of uh, 
uh, copper cable, um, this enamel covered uh, cable as well. I have rewired this according to uh, the method that Big Clive uh, shows on that video linked earlier. Um, and yeah, it works fine. And again, it is voltage controlled, but you can actually uh, affect the output using this pot. So that's pretty cool. Definitely want to play a little bit more with this circuit. Um, I've got a couple of heat sinks, a couple of MOSFETs, um, a toroid inductor, and I think I'll throw the rest away. That's the circuit working for this week. We'll see you next time.